Thermal analysis for electronics is one of the key application areas for flow EFD, as CFD can predict heat transfer and fluid flow to give accurate temperature profiles. The electronics cooling module is an optional upgrade to flow EFD, which unlocks several features specific to electronics. These are dual heating, which allows for electrical boundary conditions to be applied, and the calculation of the subsequent voltage drop and associated heating effect in electrically conductive materials. To resist a compact model. This allows for a better representation of IC packages by defining JEDEC thermal metrics. Heat pipe compact model. Heat pipe effects can be simulated without the direct calculation of the internal two-phase flow. PCB generator. PCBs can be defined by stack up and copper content to create an orthotropic material conductivity property. Additional libraries are provided for typical electronics cooling applications such as materials, fans, tech devices and interface materials. Let's look at some of these features in action. To demonstrate flow EFD for electronics, we'll be considering a force convection example of a PCB in a box with a fan and a heatsink. Inlet and outlet vents can be seen for the airflow. Let's first create a new project using a flow EFD template of external air with a typical IC package default material. The computational domain can be seen by zooming out. This needs to be scaled to a more appropriate size for analysis using the domain drag handles and then hidden. Let's now insert some materials into the model. The outer casing is selected to be an aluminum alloy by selecting the parts in the view screen. The fan is selected in the part tree and the nylon 66 material applied. Let's now insert a flow EFD fan to drive the airflow through the enclosure. The internal fan option is used and the faces for the inflow and outflow are selected directly on the creogeometry. The extended fan library in the electronics cooling module includes popular manufacturers and models typically used in force convection designs. We find the model we want and then we check the fan curve which is predefined. Next, let's use the two resistor compact model to represent our microprocessor. This is the most power hungry and critical component on the board, so a better fidelity model should be used when JEDEC data is available on datasheets. Two resistor compact models are a step up from a single material lumped package representation and allow for a junction temperature prediction. The top face is selected and then the package chosen. Finally, a power dissipation is applied. Thermal interface materials such as greases or gap pads are a critical heat transfer path and need to be represented correctly. In this instance, there is no creo part available to apply the material to, so instead we can use the contact resistance feature to apply the effects. The top surface of the microprocessor is selected and then the material and thickness option chosen. We can now select a material from our database, such as the 3M thermal tape, and apply a representative thickness of 0.2 millimeters. Other ICs on the board will be dissipating power and to model these we use a volume source. The volume source is applied to a part and a power value assigned. Multiple selections can be used and in this case our RAM chips will be dissipating 2 watts total to give 0.5 watts each. Finally let's apply the PCB properties using the Flow EFD compact model. The board is selected and the PCB chosen from the database. In this instance, it's the 2 signal 2 power board. By looking at the properties, we can see the number and thickness of the board layers and the percentage coverage of copper on each of these layers. This information is used to define the in-plane and through-plane material conductivities for the board. This will depend on the defined conductor and dielectric materials. Just to touch on the other features, the Flow EFD electronics cooling module also includes electrical conditions, heat pipes and thermal joint features which can be also used. Looking at the results, we can see the final steady state operating temperature of the PCB and components in this surface plot. Probing the plot allows us to check the temperature under the cursor. We can use this result to understand if there will be unacceptable thermal expansion due to temperature gradients. The two resistor component reports a junction temperature of 102 degrees Celsius. Let's also look at the heatsink temperature, which shows us the variation on the surface. The outer fins are the coolest. 
A plot of H shows where the heat is most effectively being removed by convection. Again, the outer fins and the leading edge fins are doing most of the work whilst the centre ones are not very effective. The enclosure temperature shows us if our electronics will pass touch temperature compliance. Our model squeaks in at just under 41C around the fan outlet, which is a typical industry upper bound. Flow trajectories show how the airflow moves around inside the enclosure. Here we have the airflow through the heatsink being animated. The majority of the airflow is entering from the vent slots on the right. Now we have performed a baseline analysis, we would like to optimize the design. Being Creo embedded makes this step very straightforward. The parametric study is started and a design of experiments selected. For this case, our fan can vary between 30 and 120 mm from the left edge of the enclosure, and the heatsink fin spacing can vary between 2 and 6 mm. We use the DOE to determine the best combination of these parameters. The output parameter to optimize is the U1 junction temperature, which we want as low as possible. The solved scenario table has 10 experiments which were solved sequentially, and by checking the goals, we can see that scenario 4 is the coolest and 6 the hottest. Scenario 6, which is the worst case scenario, has the fan far from the heatsink and a high fin density. Scenario 4 has the fan directly in front of the heatsink with a low fin count for a lower flow resistance. The resultant delta T between the projects is over 20 degrees Celsius. This was an example of a forced convection air-cooled electronics box, but FlowEFD can be used for a wide variety of electronics cooling needs. Applications include natural convection cooled devices, mobile devices, telecoms equipment, LEDs, and water-cooled high-powered electronics. FlowEFD covers a wide range of CFD needs with an easy-to-use interface embedded within PTC Creo.